I think we all feel like we're done now. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what am I going to say? Uh, I will say thank you. I will say that I feel like a chronic underachiever. Um, I can say that the actual problems that go with this particular role are sometimes overwhelming. And it's delightful to be able to share them with people that are faithful, that are thinkers, and that care about justice and outcomes that are for human flourishing. But today, when I awakened, when I thought about the integrated life, which we've heard seamlessly woven today, I have to confess my superficiality. Because first of all, I was so grateful for the weather. And that was an answer to prayer. And secondly, for me, the integrated life was simply trying to figure out how I could look like business casual in the upper half of my body, <laughs> knowing that I have a pulpit, and then be able to have football attire for the bottom half of my body, so that I'd be comfortable when I sat for a couple hours. So I just want to say I'm sorry, I don't have much more to offer than that. But I do want to say a couple things. Everybody here is pretty much a young person to me. Because I'm in a season of life where a lot of my life has been behind me. I came to Eastern in 1992. Many of you weren't even born then. And I saw Eastern be a five to 600 student college. And this past semester in the spring, we just broke 7,500 students. At this time in higher education, let alone Christian higher education, that is miraculous. And I'm glad it's miraculous so that we don't really believe in ourselves. We believe that God can do anything and he's called us in the authority, not of ourselves, but of God. And so we can work with confidence knowing that all good gifts come from God. No variation. It's an amazing promise. We work with the authority of knowing that whatever we do, in word or in deed, we can do it all to the glory of God. So the normal becomes super normal. The natural becomes supernatural. Even in the mundane stuff. I think about the gifts that we've been given. You know, one of the things, I had a conversation with the president of a local university and we were taking a walk around campus. It was the first time this individual was on campus. And we were walking around and, you know, we have a beautiful campus. And sometimes, historically, it's been beautiful in spite of the buildings. <laughs> now, you know, for the first time in our history, we have five building projects going on simultaneously. It's a mess. <laughs> and it's so great to have this wonderful feeling of disruption of beauty. And then we think about endowments. And so as we're walking along, uh, this individual is concerned, you know, said, this is, you know, we're, we're not a largely endowed school. And I'm thinking, in my mind, I kind of think you are. <laughs> and so I just casually said, yeah, I kind of understand the pressure. What is your endowment? Their endowment was seven times our endowment. I didn't actually specify that in response. <laughs> but inside, God and I were already talking. <laughs> there was another story where one of our former professors was at a seminary, not too far from here. And when I saw him at a, a particular conference, he was all excited, he said, did you hear, we got this gift. Now I should preface it by saying, since my presidency, which this is my seventh year, I've been praying for our endowment on personal terms. I've asked the Lord to bless our endowment, to grow our endowment. And I was praying specifically, and I thought biblically, for 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, and instead of fold, I put million. <laughs> you know, modern interpretation, come on. So I was praying for $30 million, and year by year went by, and then 
three years ago, I, I was at this conference and this individual said, yeah, we got this amazing gift to our endowment, $30 million. I was so angry because I obviously had not prayed the address. It was 15 miles off, 15 miles. It was so close. You know, and then I almost felt like the Lord was kind of chuckling, saying, you don't really need a big endowment. You just need strong knees. And I think we've gotten here. And Dr. Rice, thank you for being the first to cry today. I appreciate that. Because now I can do it and have a presence. <laughs> but so much has happened because of being on our knees. Listen to what we heard today. Like, we had church. It was amazing. Every generation, young, old, it's Easter. It's Palmer Theological Seminary. It's difference makers, way makers. People that take risk for the reputation. Now, when I came to Eastern, and I'll, I'll tell this, this, you're gonna love this one. I was at a rather conservative Bible college prior to coming here. When it was announced that I was leaving to come to Eastern University, one of my friends, one of my friends, seriously said this, what are you doing? Do you know you're going to bed with the Antichrist? <laughs> That's a quote. <laughs> That's what I said, both forwards and backwards. It was amazing to me. I just couldn't believe it, right? And then I found out that wasn't really true. What I did find was a fellowship of risk takers for the glory of God. I found a group that followed Jesus when it said he made himself of no reputation and he changed the world. I found a group that understood the power of faith, the integrity of thinking, and the power of social action. Kingdom justice. You know, I often wonder why more people are not falling in love with Jesus when Jesus says, I like to give hope to the poor. To me, that's one of my first questions when I want to talk to somebody about Jesus. I say, what do you feel? Would you like to be able to give hope to the poor? Like, who's going to say, no? <laughs> I'm not into that, really. Or to heal the sick. Yeah, our medical system, but no, not the medical. Who would want to heal the sick? Yeah, I, I'm kind of into that. How can we make that accessible to everybody? How can we help those who are incarcerated to visit those who are alone, to help widows, to care for the orphans? Who's against that stuff? You can't be human and be against that. That's why I don't get why more people don't follow Jesus. And that's why Eastern exists. You know, Eastern has, I used to say, and occasionally I do, depends on what group I'm with, but you know, that we've always been too liberal for conservatives and too conservative for liberals, and we found a niche <laughs> that nobody wants to give money to. <laughs> and I'm the president. <laughs> Is this a place where you give me money now? You know, it's kind of ridiculous. And yet, in our absolute dependency every year for students and for money and for stability in our faculty and our staff and trying to do miracles with what we've been entrusted with, trying to steward it with integrity and love and not always doing it to the best that we'd like to. Somehow, through all the mess, faith wins. So, Please continue to pray for Eastern University. There's seven colleges in the university. When I came, there was only one college, and it's like, eh, that's how you know. We have seven colleges in the university, and they're flourishing, and they're making an impact in people's lives. And I don't even have to say that. We heard it. And so thank you. Thank you for being part of the story of Eastern, whether it be dramatic or whether it be normal, that it has significance. What a beautiful thing.
that our lives have significance. So, pray, give, work, serve, flourish, and celebrate. A hundred years starts next year for us. Amen. Courtesy of the sweat, the faith, the sacrifice of Eastern Baptist Theological Seminary founded in 1925 and went for 25 years. And then in addition to that, the Liberal Arts and Science Division became a college, a college, a Baptist college, Eastern Baptist College in 1952. And 25 years later, it became Eastern College of Baptist Institution because now more and more people were coming from this wonderful cross-section of Christianity. And then in 2001, it became Eastern University and now so many people were coming, whether they were Christian or not, as students. So even as young people were exiting the church, Eastern was attracting students. So we were actually being entrusted with a bigger opportunity, the opportunity of sharing the gospel and living in a loving community, and then sending out to the world people who will make a difference shaped by faith, reason, and justice. It doesn't get better than that. And to think that at the worst time in the history of higher education, we're doing our best. But that's kind of the Eastern way. It's a little crazy. But we're good at crazy. I mean, I'm the president, I'm crazy. So I want to say thank you, God bless you, and I think we're just about done. Is there anything else that anybody wants to say? I have a wife. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to have church, we have to probably fly. I got to go to football. Okay, God bless you.